Okay, so I'm at an A.O. Smith Signature 300. I've never seen one of these before. Uh, apparently it's a Home Depot special. But I'm here to replace this gas valve and the burner assembly. And this is a really weird pilot uh, control. This is, seems very, very odd. But I just had to shut the gas off to the house because they put the shutoff valve after the union and now i'm gonna have to switch uh the shutoff valve and the union's locations that way in the future it could be done the right way so i got pipe dope out and i'll just be on uh threading it and threading it all back in okay so i got the shutoff here and have the gas back on uh, i didn't bother connecting the union up because Right now I'm going to disassemble all this gas piping and everything else off of the gas valve itself and show you how I changed the gas valve without draining the whole heater. Okay, so I have everything disconnected from the gas valve itself and all of these pieces right here, these tubings are going to be removed and replaced because I have a new burner assembly, but this is going to stay. So I just made sure to twist uh, the opening out of the way because I'm just going to let pressure out of the heater into the bucket. It's not going to be much. And now I can start to take off the gas valve itself. So I have my new gas valve here and ready, and I'm going to slowly take this one out. This uh, little piece wants to come with it, so I'm going to make sure that when I pull out, I push this one in and hold this back. Or not. That looks tight. So it's in, I can make it nice and tight. This, I will cut down the side and just slip it, slip it over. But you can see, got some water in here. We're still dripping a little because we're not tight, but really not much water at all came out and it didn't have to drain down the whole tank. And now I can actually close this off. and finish tightening and getting that piece off. Okay, so I undid the screws here and there, right here for the burner assembly. And this had to come off with it. One of the screws held it in. But this thing is very odd. It's some sort of pressure switch. Um, it's just very, very weird. It somehow ties into this little piece of tubing. I don't know, very, very odd. And it connects using the pressure tapping down here on the gas valve itself. But now that this is all disconnected, I could pull, pull out my igniter wire. Here is 
these are gas valve or uh, burner burner assembly, and you can see inside there, nice and clean. And I'm just gonna make sure that these are the same, and they do look completely identical. So this one off to the side and straighten out these pieces of tubing, the thermocouple, and I'll slide it in. Okay, so it's in place nice and tight and working on getting everything reconnected. I got the wires all connected. I have to get this piece in on the gas valve for this uh, weird pressure switch and connect the thermocouple and the gas tubing. Okay, so I just lit the pilot, which you could see in there, that little blue flame. But now I can switch it over. I'll put it to setting A for now. Turn it on and it kicks on. And we'll see what happens. We'll let it run for a while. Um, see what happens when I just switch it to pilot. Is the pilot still lit? Yep, I see it. Back on and it lights. And you can see if you look inside of that weird control, which is right there, that nut is now pressing against that metal tubing, when before there was a gap, about 1 16th inch gap, very small gap. So, we'll monitor it and see how it burns. Okay, so I got that cover back on. You could hear it's running. It's been running without any issues. So we're heating up and the customer will finally have hot water after weeks or a week without it. So that's definitely gonna be nice. And you can see here's our gas valve and here's our union so it could be worked on more easily in the future. And that's it. Cleaned everything up, and I'll be heading out. And this is the heater that's right outside the door. That I guess that one replaced. And it's in rough shape. 